Good evening and welcome to North Andover CAM's annual meeting for the year 2020. I'm going to start this meeting, like all our other meetings, with a uh, COVID statement from the governor. In accordance to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place and specifically pursuant to Massachusetts legislation enacted on April 3, 2020, Section 16 of Chapter 53 of the Acts of 2020, which addresses numerous pandemic-related challenges faced by Massachusetts nonprofit corporations attempting to conduct business while maintaining social distancing. The new, law, the new law sets forth modifications applicable to Massachusetts nonprofit corporations for the duration of the governor's March 20, 2020 COVID-19 declaration of emergency and subsequent phased reopening plans. This year's annual meeting of members is being conducted remotely and our remote participation does constitute as a quorum of members. So thank you for listening to that statement. And we can now call the, the meeting to order. The rest of our, our group is on Zoom. So let's uh, see if um, Peter Bailey's is out on the Zoom call. Can we hear? Hi guys. Excellent, I can hear you, uh, Pete. Hi, how is, how is everybody? You, can everybody hear okay? Yep. Good, good. Uh, yep, I'd like to call to order the uh, North Andover CAM 2020 annual meeting. And I'm going to let Brian introduce the members of the board and the staff. Excellent. So take it away, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Peter Bailey's, he's our current president of the board of directors. I also have, actually, I'm going to jump to staff while I have it here. I have Ray De Silva, uh, who is our produ production coordinator, Bill Robert, who is, um, uh, I believe, back in the control room, uh, and he's our programming and operations coordinator. Uh, Gabrielle Griffiths has joined us this year, and he's, she's our access coordinator and volunteer coordinator. Peter Bailey's again, president of our uh, board of directors. Steve Ventry, if he's there. Um, I see cameras slowly coming on there. He is, hi Steve. Steve Ventry is our treasurer. He uh, works at Lowell Five Bank. Mike Grant is our clerk or secretary. He is also, he's our, also our superintendent's appointee from the superintendent of schools. Mike Hale is here. He's, um, uh, he's our selectman appointee. And did I get everybody else? And then Randy Hart is, uh, has, is the other member of our board whose term has ex he's expired. And, um, and he's not with us this evening. Um, I have that. Um, if everybody says hi. Hi, Mike, I see you there. Um, it's good to see the rest of the, uh, rest the of members. Um, I'm glad you could join us tonight. Um, uh, just a quick uh, recap, this is our annual meeting. Um, it's, it's what we have to do as a, a nonprofit, 501c3, uh, with our membership. So we're conducting our annual meeting here in April. Um, if I move on right into our business items, uh, we have our youth member report from Nick Kissel. And if you remember, we have um, a voting membership and a youth membership. And because our youth membership is easily half of our um, total tally uh, membership, we wanted to make sure that they always had some kind of presence here at the annual meeting because they are very active and they, they do constitute usually half of our, our growing membership. Uh, Nick, are you out there on the Zoom land? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. I hear you. Hey, how are you? All right. Um, can you give uh, the membership a little update on uh, your annual meeting you guys had this year? Yeah, so we had some members come, more than two, so it's good. And we were talking about just our future like ideas for what we can do for the youth with like meeting as ideas. So such as future workshops where we we're discussing more in-depth classes <coughs> for different like different things such as 
Photoshop, which some kids are more interested in rather than filming or editing videos. We also discussed ideas such as a cooking show because we haven't, as youth members, we haven't gotten a lot of time to use the kitchen. And we were interested in just seeing what we could do with it if we could have like simple like shows of cooking and also just general gatherings of the youth just so we can get together and do more things together and just work together more. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, and the staff brought it back to me and uh, we all talked about it and they've definitely were coming up with some uh, good plans for the going into the summer. I think everybody's itching to get outside. Uh, so yes, we do a lot of computer based editing here, but um, we definitely can get out there, shoot, enjoy the sunshine and, and all that. Um, any questions for Nick while he's, while he's front and center? I'm going to say hearing none, then we'll, we'll move on. Um, thank you. Don't go anywhere. Be part of this meeting because we have exciting news for you <laughs> for the rest of the time. Um, okay. So operations report uh, operations update for the year even in the classes we taught teach with um, public speaking uh, we say try to slow down don't rush what you're saying uh, but I'm gonna go through this as fast as I can because I'd rather talk to you guys and um, get to the fun and exciting stuff but a lot happened in um, in 2020 um, obviously this is the year of COVID-19 we have a, a stopping point in the world. I mean, for something this big, this huge to, to stop the world is, um, is just monumental. So um, as things started to shut down, uh, we quickly learned that we were essential services. And we, um, we worked side by side with the town. Uh, we never really shut down. We had to kind of shut our doors to the membership um, just in accordance with the with Massachusetts uh, guidance, but we stayed essential services. We uh, performed um, side by side with the town. We did a lot of safety information and training for the for the town employees. So if they it was uh, working side by side with the health department, we did training videos on how to wash your hands right, how to put on the masks, what's PPE, um, and um, a lot of the stuff didn't necessarily reach the air, but it was it was essential for getting the workers back engaged I at town hall. Um, we worked side by side with the um, executives in the town government, uh, trying to write policy for the open meeting law. And basically, we were invited graciously into the department head meetings about how to how to keep these meetings going and how to keep communication going in going on through the town. And the town decided that no meeting could be deemed public unless it was viewable by all, both online and, and through the channels. And we came up with a few different ways of, um, of, of, of handling that, whether it was streaming. Um, the town made the instant communication through email. We developed a um, system so that we could um, just have that flow um, in real time. So a lot of other towns did different things, but we, we kept it as, as real time as possible for the, for the community. Um, the, the good thing about where we're at, we had done so many uh, remote participation meetings to begin with, uh, where a, a member of the school committee or the member of the, the selectmen were away on a job site, but they still wanted to telepresence into the meeting. So we had already developed that workflow and signal flow um, already. So when it came down to shut down everything, get everybody out of the room, we were ready to bring signals into the room through computers and into the broadcast system and right into our studio. So we didn't miss a beat. As soon as they were ready, we um, were able to stream meetings instantly where other towns kind of scrambled and had to um, figure out how to do it. Um, so we, we feel like we were right up on top of that. Um, so working with the municipality to, um, to develop that open meeting law policy and 
the workflow for the employees and the board members, the volunteer board members, to um, be able to communicate properly, schedule things property, properly. Um, we took on a lot more workload, so we had, um, we had to mix it up on the channels. So we've always kind of prided ourselves on keeping the channels uh, independent. So government stuff on the government channel, education stuff on the education channel, and access uh, open to the public uh, on the access channel. Uh, for th as we started to um, take on more meetings, we went from, I believe it was eight meetings, all the way to, I'm saying 26, 26 different meetings. And um, there's only so much air time on the channels. So we, st you know, to avoid a lot of frustration on the, the town side where, you know, these are volunteers or they're the administrative assistants at, at town, they, um, you know, trying to find an open time slot, we ended up shifting a handful of the new meetings that we had to take on and we shifted those from the government channel to the education channel, still giving the school committee the priority on the channel. Um, we were able to facilitate uh, the extra meeting load. And after, you know, after about a month, we, we, you know, everybody settled down. They kind of uh, incorporated the, the system into play and, and it became really seamless. The, um, everything being remote, we had to take all the meetings through a laptop or a computer, which relied on internet. And when we started our first meeting, we realized, you know, if we want to back this meeting up, um, if our internet fails, there's no record of the meeting if we had two records going on in our building. So you know, we instantly adapted to that and said, all right, we need, a, we need a recording happening at another building. So at our old recording locations, we uh, set up the, the backup record there, recorded independently. At least you had two different buildings, two different networks. Um, so we never lost a meeting, to my knowledge. We, um, we, we did uh, pretty flawless work on that. And um, in town government marched on without, without a hitch, which is great. Um, shift in mission. So as you know, we're here for you, the public, and we, we run all three channels. So we have some attention on the government channel. We have some attention on the school channel. And a lot of our mission is really on the access channel where we bring the public in, we teach them how to shoot. Uh, we teach them how to edit and, and go through the whole production process and get that content on that access channel. So as, as soon as kind of the state of Massachusetts shut down, the public couldn't get out here anyway, you know, against that policy. So we really shifted our, our mission uh, to a very government heavy mission where we, um, we produced as many um, COVID alert messages uh, we, um, again, worked on the training videos, whether it was for the school department or the Board of Health or the, the um, IT department here at, at town. Um, we, shift mission. we, um, what else did we do? We uh, also shifted a, a great deal to anything that couldn't be uh, get any, any event that couldn't be gathered in public, we would help uh, produce that um, so that normalcy could still happen in the world. So if you couldn't gather for a parade or you couldn't gather for the tree lighting, you know, we pre-produced it. It started with Veterans Day Services. The ve veteran service officer reached out to us and said, hey, how can we still have, I'm sorry, Memorial Day. It was our Memorial Day ceremony and, and they reached out to us and said, how can we still do, how can we do this? So we really we pre-produced it way ahead of time, and so on the day, on Memorial Day, they could release their um, memorial services um, down at the um, cemetery. And um, I think it went off without it went off without a hitch, and a lot of great views both on the channels, and um, and online. You know, we, we streamed a lot. We put stuff on YouTube um, and on our video on demand, and. Um, I, I, it just brought a little bit of normalcy to the, the, the town and the, the world, hopefully. Um, COVID updates, we, our primary mission early on in the first three months was getting information out. Try, you know, I reached right out to the town manager and the superintendent. I said, let's get the two of you on the channel right away. 
Um, make sure that the public knows that the, the two of you are in sync and, and they're not getting mixed messages from, from both areas. They, and we just continually got COVID updates from the uh, director, of the health director, the police chief, fire chief, um, business, and, and all the PPP loans. We had the economic development director here. Um, the town manager, um, uh, many times, many times she came out. Um, so getting that information out, one of the primary mission for us was keep people educated so that they weren't worried. You know, they weren't worried to go out, they weren't worried things were falling apart. Keep the up updated information coming. Um, next on that was uh, the end of the school year for the seniors. Uh, the whole world was shut down and, and there was graduation coming. Um, all the senior week activities, uh, the middle school, same thing, awards day ceremonies and whatnot. So we pre-produced one of, the, one of the, <laughs> the biggest workloads we had was graduation. Graduation um, in normal times is about an hour. Everybody cycles in, cycles out, and, and they do their thing and it's, and it's great. Um, the school system uh, polled the students and the families and they said, what are your priorities? What are your, you know, wh where, do you, where do you put importance in being together, um, getting your award, having your mask on, all that kind of stuff. And based on their responses, they decided that they, they wanted to be with their families, they wanted to be able to take pictures, they wanted to walk across the stage and get their diploma. Um, so it turned out to be uh, on the back side of that, on the production side, it was about six days of production and um, six hours, six hour plus days where you had school committee members, administrators, school um, student council uh, kids that were there for six hours or three or four hour shifts as the families came up, did their 10 second, you know, <laughs> two minute thing and, and left. Uh, quicker for the individual families, but uh, you know, super long time for everybody on the back side. And, um, but what resulted was, uh, you know, a, a television production that um, was as, as real as, and met their needs um, based on their survey as, as possible. So um, both the students and the, and the school system was greatly appreciated that. We did the awards ceremony, scholarship awards, awards day. Um, what else did we do? Uh, move up day for the middle school, uh, teacher appreciation, uh, video, which would have made would have been more of like a uh, an evening event for for the um, s faculty and staff. Um, Nam's promotion and awards ceremony. Uh, Nam's chorus uh, for the middle school. We did. They you know they lost their chorus at the end of the year. So I, I reached out to the, to Miss Leokas and said, "What can we do?" So she ended up creating a song. And we added, we, ha we had an intern here uh, for the summer, and um, we edited uh, the, the song Imagine with 360 kids singing uh, on their own through iPhones or you know, tablets or whatnot. And um, it's magical. Search it up on, on, on the channel or YouTube and, and check it out. Um, but it made the end of the year special for them because they, they weren't able to do the concerts and, and the, the, all, the, all the stuff they had worked for up until that point. Um, town meeting was one of the other huge things that we were involved with and, th and through, you know, it starts with the ambition of the town moderator, and, but the collaboration within the town, um, getting town meeting to happen, it, it got, uh, everybody pushed their town meeting back. We, here in North Andover, we tush pushed our meeting toward, you know, toward June. Um, but we were one of the first towns to execute it, and um, it was a, a it was a huge undertaking because it was socially distant. It was how do you get information in their hands without passing out stuff? When at that point we were afraid we couldn't pass things around for COVID. Um, uh, um, closed captioning, you know, for hearing impaired. How do we how do we deal with that in an outdoor environment? So we we ended up doing it. On the football field, we we use Zoom, we use Google, we used um, mobile devices out in the field. But we were one of the first ones to execute town meeting, and other towns looked toward North Andover for what they did and what they accomplished to model um, their town meetings in, in one fashion or another based on what we did. Um, so uh, the first three months of COVID was insanely busy. Um, 
here at the studio. The doors were closed most of the time. We were running around. Uh, the staff at, at one point, um, we, we decided it was easier for them to work remotely. Um, so they would edit, um, do programming, do any of the kind of the administrative stuff on, on their end, um, all from home. So we got real smart on delivering uh, media over internet one way or another. Um, again, that's, you know, I think everybody did that uh, fast and furious in COVID. Um, but, and then I stayed uh, in and out of the buildings here uh, around town. I did a lot of the shooting, um, whether it was at the food service lines or the rapid test clinics, um, getting the interviews done here, um, it, it, the COVID alerts. Um, we, we continued on with some of the shows which was great. I feel like you know some of the shows that we don't typically get on a monthly basis, more on a quarterly basis, we actually got a little bit more traction and just because people didn't have to go anywhere to uh, arrange the meeting, which was great. Um, so I think that's kind of the, the, the COVID uh, update in a nutshell. Um, we did not stop. Um, membership was a little bit, um, hampered by it all but as far as what we did here as a facility and as a resource for the town um, we just kept going and just figuring out ways to a get people informed and then hopefully it toward toward things settling down get them distracted a little bit get some entertainment on um, and take people's minds off of things um, so membership uh, for just basic reporting the um, membership for the year of 2020, it uh, was pretty in, in line with what we had started with. You know, what we have year to year, a total of 183, about 72 adult members. Again, half our, if not more than half our youth, is our membership is youth. Senior citizens right here, and we, we did institute an out-of-town membership, and we've started to gather some there. Ten, ten organizations active on the books in the year 2020. Um, the one thing that did take a hit was our, our volunteer uh, activity, obviously, because once the I think everything shut down in, in March, um, we didn't have a ton of opportunities for people to come out and do stuff, but we had one. That's a hint. Um, the, um, so, but when we've really tallied the numbers, I was, you know, if we were on that 70, you know, 70 average trend there, um, to, to get 22 out of, you know, two months, two and a half months, uh, it was a good start to the year anyway. I have no doubt that that number is going to go up. It may not shoot right back up. Depends on how things open up this year and into the fall. But we even even this year, we had a lot of sports coverage and we had a lot of volunteers come out. Um, a, because I think everybody wanted to go outside. So any opportunity they could get to go outside, uh, the better. And they jumped at it. And we had some fantastic volunteers that helped us uh, do a lot of stuff this year. Uh, equipment usage we see this year after year uh, same thing numbers are going to be a little bit skewed in some of the areas but the studio use was pretty much in line uh, the remote the, the remote TriCaster the portable studio was a little bit lower than normal and our camera usage uh, was limited to me and a couple of us at staff and you know it wasn't going out with you know we have seven seven to eight different cameras that can go out at the same time so we really only had a couple cameras going out at the same time at most. Um, edit bays, uh, same thing, less projects being edited by the other people. And then the town, the town sites, whether it was the remote sites, the uh, meeting rooms, those, those hours went up just a little bit. Uh, organizations that joined this year, uh, Merrimack Black and Brown Voices uh, joined and did a PSA, uh, they're still active. They're looking to do their next PSA right now. Uh, the Democratic Town Committee, um, we uh, got approached by them because they were going to shoot, uh, they were trying to do a uh, candidates forum uh, for the Seth Moulton race uh, and they were going to do it in Burlington. They couldn't spread out. Our facility being big enough to handle three candidates across the stage plus a moderator over to the side, um, they were looking for a bigger space and we could provide it based on our new facility. So we are, we're excited about that. Um, and we're happy to have them uh, do more. Uh, workshops and events, uh, again, all these got cut off real fast. So these are just from January and February. 
but uh, and then one of them actually got cut off mid stride. So um, we're looking, we're excited to have, we're we're looking to open up our workshops for the summer. Uh, we'll get back at, to that in a moment. Programming, um, similar numbers, uh, again a little bit more skewed, a little bit toward uh, the municipal, um, and imports came up a little bit, but um, just in a nutshell. Um, Programming numbers, you know, no, no, no giant swings one way or another. Uh, imports are usually about half. Websites, social media. Um, we're this is a new slide. We're going to start tracking that a little bit more. Um, a because everything went virally digital this year because everybody had to start streaming everything. Um, so we're starting to track these numbers. Um, some pretty impressive numbers. Um, new users. Uh, 8,300 8, new users. That's that's pretty uh, that's pretty impactful for the year. Um, you can see some of these spikes. Um, you're looking at you know in that in that March area. It got busy in September. Um, back to school. School committees were off the charts, and we did a, a what is your school system going to look like uh, video. It was a it was a, it was a long video, but um, uh, that got a ton of views. Um, it, both on online and on the channels. Um, Facebook and Instagram, Instagram, same thing, seeing 200% increases. Instagram was new to us. Uh, we've had it before, but we started to push it a little bit more this year too. Um, and so we'll, we'll start to follow metrics on this uh, year over year after this. Um, I'm, I'm already at a treasurer's report. Uh, so if if um, I can hand it over, if Steve is eager to talk, I can let him shine his face online. Are you still nearby? Sure. Thank you, Brian. So as you can see, um, I don't know if you can see the chart, but so for the year we had operating funds totaling $495,335, uh, uh, represented between Comcast, which was 311.6 roughly, and Verizon at 183.6. These are uh, essentially franchise fees, <clears throat> excuse me, which represent 4% of the gross revenues of Comcast and Verizon uh, subscribers for the town. Uh, in addition to the, to the franchise fees, we get capital uh, funds. Uh, essentially, we start off with 10 or 15 initially at the start of each year from each entity, and then we get quarterly payments. So you can see these roughly total uh, $50,000 typically used for capital investment back in equipment uh, for the for the organization and then other represents the private donations and membership fees for the for the year um, offsetting that then is the expenses four hundred and eight thousand dollars for the year which roughly is comprised of occupancy expense salaries insurance just essential operating expenses for the organization uh, and Briefly, that's the overview that I'd provide tonight to you. Thank you. And so to dig, dig a little deeper into that, thank you, Steve Ventry. Um, we're a little different from um, a lot of the resources around. So we have our almost fixed funding through this, you know, through your cable bills. You know, it's a little fee at the end of your, 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 your cable bill. And as long as people are still paying their cable bills, we still get our funding. Um, on a year-over-year -year basis. Um, so as our operations change and a lot of things we couldn't do, whether it was workshops or um, travel to conferences or outdoor events, sheep shearing, national night out, you know, all these things usually cause expenses for us. Um, we, had, if you, you know, you see the difference in the expenses and the income. Um, we had a lot of unused budget items this year. Um, about we used about 75% of our salary uh, allocation based on we weren't paying contractors to cover the meetings. Uh, we were planning to hire a part timer uh, this in this in 2020. As things shut down, the landscape cha landscape changed. We weren't going to hire somebody and not have work for them to do. Um, Go back to this. Uh, traveling to conferences—that's a big expense. That's a big uh, expense line on our balance sheet. Uh, equipment rental—we just talked about volunteer hospitality. A lot of the stuff we do with uh, lots of volunteers, we feed them. We we try and make this a, a pleasant experience for them. Um, 
it's a in bookkeeper. We're going to bring in a bookkeeper this year, but then again, uh, you know, less people in the building. Um, we just didn't want to keep. Uh, we didn't want to bring more people into the building at, in those times where we didn't know what was going on. So, so we took advantage of that in some ways, where you know we're a little bit more flexible um, than municipalities, or because we're a nonprofit, um, we can designate these funds uh, as the board desires. And we decided to take some of this unused funding, and uh, we'll get into future worries later, but we took some of this funding and we tried to see where we could return it into the, the community. And um, the, uh, the municipality was kind of being conservative and they, they weren't going to have the funds to light the um, Christmas, the common. So we were ready to do that. We, the board uh, graciously approved um, some of the excess money to, or unused, I should say, unused, it's not excess, uh, budget items to um, light the, the, the common. Uh, we were ready to do it, we approved it, the vendor was all ready to do it, and then it snowed and they couldn't get on the, the field. So we ended up not doing it. We did, however, uh, designate some money for the um, museum, down at the Historical Society, uh, the old textile museum, there's um, uh, the ongoing mission there is to build a, a movie theater in the in the back, and so it's alongside with our mission. So we helped um, get wiring for them. We got a projector, uh, a, a brilliant mu movie projector, so that you can watch uh, some fantastic movies in that space. Um, so we were able to still keep that money into the community and use it appropriately, where we might not have been able to do that any other year. Um, so again, we're always trying to find a way to uh, impact the community. Um, that's all I have on to follow up for any of the um, treasurer's report. Any questions on that before we go? Oh, I do have, I have capital expenses. So we did, um, we did take the opportunity because sometimes in here it's, it's hard to update computers when everybody's using them all the time. So we updated uh, the staff computers and the edit suite computers, and we're on the cusp of uh, the last three edit suite computers too. So um, we took that opportunity to, to change those in capital expenses. Uh, we built a, we re rebuilt the school committee room at the administration building, and that was a planned project for the, the summer. Um, so that was part of our capital expense, uh, our capital plan. And, we bought for, again, we'll get into it a little bit more in a second, but we bought a cinema camera for some high-end production, and that's ready to go for business um, underwriting videos and you know some well-produced pieces here. And we also got risers for the studio. You can't see them in the shop, but that's okay. Um, we got risers for the studio, and those were also planned capital purchases. Now I'll take a breath, so I can take a drink a little bit. and. Uh, any questions on the on the funding? Hey, uh, Brian. This is uh, this is Brian Howard. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the director of the North Andover Historical Society, and I just wanted to publicly not acknowledge the uh, the support that North Andover CAM has provided to us uh, beyond the theater. I mean, that in and of itself was outstanding. But you were uh, were uh, stalwart partners uh, with us through this whole pandemic. Uh, helping to provide content that we otherwise would not have been able to push out and uh, truly a, a great partner of the of the historical society and we're looking forward to working with you long into the future so uh, Brian thank you no, very much for your you're welcome that's that. another example of how you know anywhere where people couldn't gather right so the historical society you know wanted to invite people in you know they, they couldn't at that point so we generated some content so that people in the community or their their benefactors could still you know, enjoy the history of North Andover. So thanks, thank you for that shout out, I appreciate it. Um, and we're, again, always looking to give back and, and partner. So we have great plans, right, Bri? We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do more. <laughs> um, all right, community television in a whole. Um, I just wanted to take a moment and just really, just update people and just ask people to talk about it. Um, we talked about it last year and the year before about the FCC rule changes. Um, the administration has changed, so the FCC uh, players on the on the committee are also changing. 
So we're still going to find out a little bit more about that. But the FCC rule changes were kind of undermining, undermining our funding structure and how and how we get our funding and what's applied to our funding. Um, so we sent out letters a year or two ago ab opposing that. We knew it was probably going to be approved by the FCC. It did get approved by the FB FCC, but we laid the groundwork for the legal case as an industry, and, um, and that's where it resides right now. They did kind of punt on the, ch um, if you remember real quickly, um, they were basically changing the rules so that any in-kind donations from the cable companies to the town um, were to be deducted from the funding that would fund community television stations. So, um, you know, if it's cable drops at the at the library in the town hall, you know, those those are twenty dollars here and there. That's not a big deal. But if they were to somehow monetize uh, the channels at a market value, those could be fifty thousand dollars a channel every year. That's a huge chunk uh, for three now four channels. If uh, our our you know we're in a four hundred five hundred thousand dollar budget, um, that's a big deal. So they did punt on the channel. Uh, values and they did not include that in the language but um, that is still a big worry hopefully things have changed uh, with the with the roles uh, you know the players that are on the the committee in the FCC will get more more there uh, a constant worry in our industry is uh, consumers cutting the cord as we call it uh, going away from basic cable or any kind of cable service in their town uh, our funding comes directly from the use of the right of way for cable services, and the more people that go away with basic cable, um, the less our funding uh, comes this way. We hadn't seen, we hadn't recognized any decline in the the prior years. We just recently, two years ago, negotiated our our our, our rate, our franchise agreement rate from 2.7% of gross annual revenue to 4%. Um, and that started mid-year. So we had m a mid-year show of growth based on jumping from 27 to 4%. And we tried to predict and, and project and whatnot. Um, and then we finally, we had a full year of 4%. And moving into this year, looking back on the years, it wasn't a big deal, but looking back on the quarters, we started to s identify, now that we've got eno uh, enough quarters in, in a row, six to eight quarters, you could, s you could see the bump in the, in, the, in the percentage rate, but you could also see a trend line starting to form. Um, and we identified about, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but it was like a half a percent to a full percent per quarter that we, we saw you know, quarter to quarter, it was starting to creep down. So we're one of the last community TV stations to identify it and, and, um, and, and really lock it in. Uh, we've been fortunate, and I, to some degree, we're still fortunate in North Andover. We're, we're not Cambridge. We, we don't have a, uh, a majority of millennials you know, residing in the town. We have over half our town as senior citizens. Most likely, they're not going to cut the cord in a fast and furious fashion. Um, so we're, there is a little bit of a buffer here, but it's a clear and present danger to us now. Um, so we have been talking about diversified funding in the past, but um, it, is, it is a more media, immediate task uh, going forward. So we, we are talking about diversified funding sources, whether it's business partnerships, um, uh, under, business underwriting videos. Again, that's why we had brought that bit, bigger and better camera in. Um, one of the possible remedies locally from Massachusetts uh, with, our, with our state association, Mass Access, they've introduced a uh, mass streaming, I'm gonna, I, put it, I wasn't gonna put it as a tax, but at the end of the day, it's tax. Um, it's an act relative to streaming operations, streaming operations use of public rights away. So, a Netflix, a uh, Roku, something like that, um, they still use the public rights away to get the internet to your homes. Uh, a lot of states, I, I, I don't have a, a good snapshot off the top of my head, but a lot of states already have a streaming tax. Um, mass access put it in, in, in motion because other states have 
this tax and half of it goes to the municipality and half of it goes to the state. Uh, community television introduced this bill and basically 40% goes to the state, 40% goes to uh, the munis municipality and 20% comes to community television in those, in those regions. Um, so uh, I, I encourage you to look up SD 834, um, look it over. Uh, we already have a lot of our local representatives and senators who are signing and endorsing the bill. Um, both, there's, there's one in the House and the, the Senate, this one's the Senate number, and um, it's in more municipalities are officially backing this, um, this um, act. So um, one of the things I'm going to try, and I've already mentioned it to the town manager, is to hopefully um, get word to the selectmen, the, the select board, and, um, and see if we can get North Andover behind this um, uh, possible revenue stream for us and them. Looking forward, um, the journal is um, back in full fledged. So we kind of we started it uh, at the new year. We have a new HD new HD channel that we're scheduling out content now. It's uh, HD Verizon uh, 2024. So whenever you can. Uh, check out the HD channel. It's um, it's clear. You, you will now see things as clear as we do here because we're so proud of the stuff that we we produce here. But sometimes by the time it gets home, it's it's kind of fuzzy. Um, so please try and check out stuff on the HD channel. Uh, we are, and I'm not sure if we have it queued up. Did we ever get the website queued up on the uh, the Mac? Um, we are almost done with our new website. It is long overdue. Um, it got delayed with this building. We, we really were kind of trying to time it all with the building. And um, it's a lot more user friendly, a lot more click friendly. I don't know if you want to scroll through a little bit. It's, it's, it's still just a, um, uh, what do you call it, a, a beta uh, view of it all. But basically, uh, the channels are right here. The um, is one, one or two clicks to the schedules. You see a lot of uh, updated information that's automatically updated. And you can get to everything that you uh, need much quicker than the old site. Um, the uh, real estate where we know a lot of people, especially now with COVID, people come to our website that don't know anything about what we do. They're coming because they need to see a meeting. They, they, you know, whether it's now it's any of the 26 different meetings, but it's, um, it's it, pl people don't know what we do. They still reach this, this schedule. So we have advertising space right near those schedules that will explain everything about what we do, whether it's workshops, training, uh, job skills, that type of thing. So we're very excited. It looks, it looks nice. It looks flashy. We're still updating the pictures, um, but very exciting, long overdue. Um, Summer workshops I mentioned earlier, where um, we, we've, we, we toyed around with trying to get to the week long uh, vacations, uh, February vacation, and we, we, were, we were just ramping up the Christmas, the, the holiday vacations when we decided, you know, and then the state started to shut down after Thanksgiving. So we said, we're not gonna open up our, our workshops as the rest of the state's sh shutting down. So we, we, we followed suit on that. And then by the time it got to, um, February and April, uh, we were still super knee deep with sports. Um, it, one of the things that uh, we started to do in the fall of 2020 was uh, cover the sports for the parents that weren't allowed to go. Um, so the, that fall season of, of um, 2020, it, it was rocky for everybody. So the, the, even the league, you know, one school would get shut down for COVID. So then the games didn't happen and then they got pushed around and whatnot. But um, any of the indoor games, like I believe it was volleyball, it, nobody was allowed in except for the team so, and the camera people. Um, but so we got in, we were able to um, shoot and stream the uh, information so that we could, um, we can have the parents uh, see things real time. And that alleviated a lot of pressure on the athletic department and the parents still got to see their kids um, actively. Um, so Patrick, some workshops. So, um, so we were so busy with the, the sports that we really didn't feel like we had the bandwidth to, to separate 
and um, and have people in the studio while there was because the sports were still going on in the February stretch and whatnot, and um, we were just more reactive than anything else. Um, podcast looking forward. Um, podcasting is still on the uprise, so we have our podcasting board. We're going to furnish out the uh, the podcasting studio. Uh, we already have Salem Five Bank that's starting their podcast, and um, I believe they're going to be in tomorrow. Um, sports coverage for this year is was was nonstop. So starting with the winter sports, we we covered everything. I think Joe's on the on the call too. Joe was out there with me uh, at the ski ski slope, even though it was outdoors. The ski mountains didn't want the parents out there um, jeopardizing their operations by being too close and getting and having them shut down the whole mountain for school, you know, because of schools. So. We got there, we started streaming it. The weather was not always great, and, uh, but Joe was there with me the whole time and he stayed longer than me most days. So thank you again. Um, sports cover, uh, and then moving forward, um, I joke a lot, but ever since we've been in this building, um, which we love and we've worked you know, numerous re years to get here, but since we've been in the, 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 the new building, we had the gas fire explosions that basically shut down a lot of the outdoor activities where we market, uh, whether it's uh, sheep sharing or the, what do you call it, uh, National Night Out. They were gonna do something down in the town. Um, the, um, and then after, after gas explosion, it was Triple E, which also shut down National Night Out and all the after school activities and the, and the uh, outdoor events sheep sharing, 4th of July, that type of thing. I think there was, 4th of July happened. Um, and then COVID hit. So we really haven't had the opportunity to like just do a solid marketing campaign uh, for the new building. It's been reactive since we've been here. We've been super busy and even, you know, as bad as COVID was for the world, it thrust us into the limelight. Uh, there's not too many people in town that don't know who we are anymore. Um, you know, they've, they've had to come to us through the school system or the meetings. Um, general information, we partnered with the town um, information department where their social media um, uh, person was in sync with us the whole time. We just kind of coordinated everything. So um, it was a good exposure year for us, um, sad to say, but it was a, it was a good year for us uh, in, in that light. Um, so looking forward to getting back to our marketing campaign and, and really um, showing the, the, the town this new facility. Um, and then as we talked about earlier, um, generating new services to generate funding. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's like steering a ship, right? So we've lived on a, a very fortunate funding source for a nonprofit, when we would go to conferences, uh, nonprofit conferences from the AG's office and whatnot, they were blown away that we had 10-year contracts and fixed funding for the most part. And you know, every other nonprofit you bump into at these things is writing grants, and they're 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 trying to figure out how to get more and more uh, funding in. So um, we're becoming a very regular um, nonprofit real fast. And um, but it is like steering a ship; it's going to take a little while to to generate some of the, uh, the, the solid revenue. Um, talking about the, the diversified funding, um, we talked a little bit about producing, uh, maybe underwriting videos for local organizations, for local businesses. We've always had business uh, support uh, programs here where they could take out ad, uh, banner ads supporting us uh, and get recognition on the channel. Um, underwrite some shows and, and be the supporter of the, the show. Um, but um, with the new camera, we can charge a little bit more. And, and what, what happens with the businesses here in town, a lot of them are mom and pop, sh mom and pop shops. So in our old model, it's, you know, we'll teach you how to do it. Um, you can create your own video. And as long as it's not a call to action, you could be the expert in town and you get all the all the um, recognition in town, and it's kind of a no-brainer if you have time. Well, if there's for $150, um, but if you're the sole proprietor and all your time is spent keeping the door open, well, you're not going to have time to produce this stuff. So, um, so I've talked with a couple businesses in town. And they said, you know, look, if if there was something for a couple thousand dollars where you could produce high-quality stuff for you know four videos throughout the year and release them each quarter, 
that sounds like a big, you know, a, a good use of the money. So um, that's kind of a plan. Um, we have been, I think we talked about this at the last annual meeting. We put it on hold because of COVID, but we are partnering with the school district in we are um, test, we're pressure testing uh, how we could possibly become the management company uh, for the performance spaces at, at the schools, so whether it's the middle school, the high school, maybe even, I don't know if it's tied to them, but the, you know, the outdoor complex, if that ever happens. Um, but also within a revenue source for us, maybe a longer road to get to solid revenue for us, but also returning value back into those spaces. Right now, just like a lot of other towns, they don't charge a lot for those spaces, but yet there's no revenue that's dedicated to keep, uh, to, for the upkeep, whether it's keeping the lighting system going or microphones, that type of thing. So um, we'll be a little bit knowledgeable in those areas and we'll, we'll try and figure out the best system. So again, we're pressure testing it right now. Um, and it, 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 from another model on the South Shore, it looks like it's a, a solid, uh, place to generate some funding for us. Um, that's our snapshot forward. Um, take a quick uh, pause here for any questions or making sure that you're all still on the call and that I haven't bored you, bored you all to death. Um, it's so much more fun when you're all in the room. I just, I, I miss the energy. I miss the food. I miss... Um, I miss the excitement. So um, any questions for anything I put forth so far? So then I'm going to say hearing none. Um, our next, we've gotten out of our operating report and we've gone through our new business. Um, so the last thing on our agenda is um, elections. So every year we, um, we have terms that expire and we need to reappoint um, me members to the board. The, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, Randy Hart's term has expired. Um, he was uh, on our board uh, as uh, for his background is uh, in real estate. So uh, if last, what, two terms easily that he's been on, on the board was wrapped up in, in finding a new space for our facility um, and his experience in the real estate market uh, was very valuable uh, when we were talking about LOIs and leases and you know what, what to put on there. He was he was uh, instrumental in just getting that stuff you know in a common language for us um, and in telling us what was ordinary and what was out of the box and whatnot. So it was great to have him there. And it, like I said, it, it was invaluable to have have him here. Um, but he has uh, decided to let his term expire. And we, um, over the last handful of years, have just talked about the need for marketing. We, with our membership or our, our you know, businesses in town, we just say, you know, you got to get out there. Organizations, whether it's Rotary or Lions, you know, get the information out there, get their information out there. So we teach people how to do it. But even us, you know, with social media, we're getting better. But, you know, we don't produce a lot of uh, outgoing marketing uh, on our end. We're, we're always around and we're at every event so people do know who we are. But from a marketing campaign and digital media campaign, we, you know, we could definitely do a lot better. So we've always kind of had our thumb on the next board person being uh, focused in the, the marketing area. Um, or at the very least, you know, know that they're coming on the board to fulfill, you know, that, that role. Um, so we did, we, we looked around town, we contacted a, a handful of people, um, and you, if you've looked through the emails, you saw the slate of candidates for this election, and um, the, the board had approved the, the slate with Linda Burns, and she's uh, been an active member here, and an award-winning member here, um, also, just to give her a little, little thumbs up. Um, but um, she's also done a lot of social media for a lot of the different um, uh, groups that and organizations that she's been involved with. So um, we have that direction. She was uh, gracious enough to, to um, accept the interest. And, um, and like I said, the board uh, approved the, the slate of candidates. So if Linda, you're still out there, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? 
Thank you, Brian. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Linda Burns. I'm mm -hmm. um, president of the North Andover Mu Music Association and also the SOS committee. And um, I do a lot of the public relations and social media postings and website updatings and things for those two organizations, which has been great. Um, I've also had a really great time working with Cam and learning how to edit video and you know all that kind of stuff. So it's been really great. I'm happy for the chance to work with you all as part of the board. I'm excited to work more with the inner workings of CAM and learn about the other parts of it that I'm not as familiar with. Um, and just looking forward to seeing how I can help in any way. Excellent. Awesome. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, so uh, really our only business item for the membership today, and, um, and just to qualify that, um, our Voting quorum uh, for the meeting is 5% of our active voting membership. And um, yes, you saw, our, you saw a 70 number on the annual report for 2020. Um, our, our active um, renewal cycle does transact at the, the um, 30th of the, the December. Um, so that number usually gets chopped off until we see them again and you know between the spring and the fall whether it's football crews or baseball crews or uh, concert crews and whatnot so right now at, at the tally we had 34 active members that can vote and we need five percent of that so you know ten percent is three we have more than one and a half people uh, on the on the call that are active voting members so um, President uh, Peter Bailey's, I, I don't know if you want to um, ask the membership sure. if they want to make a motion. Yep, I'd like to um, thank you, Linda, for offering to be on the board. Uh, look forward to having you on. Um, I'd like to ask the members for a motion to include Linda Byrne on the board. Anybody like to second a motion? A second. Okay. Right. Any discussion? And all those who vote to have on the board say aye. 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 And, I'm sorry, I missed it. That's okay, Michael. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> we were just uh, having Linda on the board, asking for a motion to have on the board. We've had two couple of motions. And do you have a motion also? Anybody opposed? Yep. Nobody opposed? And OK, Linda, you're on the board. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. It'll be nice to have the, it'll be nice to have the, a, a, a board of five. It would be great. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, thank you. I'll do a little clap. <laughs> And, um, and that's all I have on our annual meeting agenda. Um, is there anyone, uh, any input from, from the members? Uh, we usually, I mean, again, you get the vibe in the room when there's a 40 people yeah. that we usually have here and, and we had a nice full belly of a nice meal from a new restaurant in town. Um, mm -hmm. We don't have that, so. Um, is uh, anything any 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 experience with COVID? If there's anything we can do better, um, any feedback from the from the group? I have a um, statement and a question. Karen Klein, good to see yes. you. Yes, good to see, good to be here. Karen, Linda, welcome to the board. That's excellent. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for all you've done this year, especially. I mean, everyone has um, done triple duty just about Ray and Bill and everyone in the in the um, Gabby. I haven't met yet. I just spoke with her over the phone, but um, I'd like to um, uh, definitely thank you for all the um, um, meetings that you do because the meetings are very important we have our poet laureate committee meeting and then we had you had two two quick little snippets of a uh, couple of the uh, programs i've done with you for um spotlight on the valley of the poets mm -hmm. um are are you going to be doing a lot more things with the young people 
once things open up again, as far as going into the schools, or is it mainly that you go have people um, come to you in the uh, studio? Do you you go out a lot to the other to the schools well, and a, to the community. A lot of the times, it's our members. Our members will go out to the concerts. I think even Kathy oh. Duran was on the call earlier. So somebody said she was doing a concert or involved with something earlier tonight. Um, so a lot of times our members will go out and, and film those concerts. We do have to definitely do uh, help the schools when they, they ask us and they need us to, whether it's graduations and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, I, again, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm a scout leader, so like, it, they're dying to get outside. So whatever we can do to get the kids outside, um, you know, the sports is definitely there. But um, our workshops, we will, we're definitely going full-fledged on our summer workshops. We typically have three to four workshops, and we're actually uh, going to partner with community programs in the summer, which usually where we do our community programs workshops in, during the school year, but uh, they said they, they're light in the summer uh, in August, so, um, so we'll try and advertise through them uh, for one of the workshops there to try and spread the, spread the word again, get more kids in. We're pretty comfortable here. Um, we've been out in COVID this whole time. Um, we've been cautious, we've been careful, we've been disciplined. Uh, we, we have the place rigged up, ready to go. I, all the restrictions are, are lightening up regardless, but um, most of the staff has um, uh, been comfortable um, out and about in the, uh, in, in the environment. Um, so yeah, we're, we're eager to do it and we're, we've got some workshops ready to go. Uh, we've taken some feedback from the youth during their membership meeting and um, we're gonna try and tailor to some of that to be a bit, bit more age specific uh, groups too, so that they can enjoy being with their peers. Good, good. Uh, one, one, just quick, silly question, probably. Uh, when you pay uh, dues with PayPal, is it uh, you lose some uh, percentage of that, don't you? Ah, uh, pennies. It's, it's, it's. I figure out what it is. Half a percent. Some, something oh, like that. Oh, it's nothing big. Yeah, it's okay. more of a convenience Maybe. for you guys. Um, and uh, just a reminder: our membership uh, dues. Uh, we, we, because we get funding through that cable bill scenario, we voted uh, a couple of years ago to take all our membership dues and return it right back into the community in the form of scholarships for the North Andover High School students. So every time you renew your membership, it's building the, 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 the stack of cash we can uh, give back to the students. This year, we, um, uh, we, we still allocated um, two, $1,000 scholarships to students at the high school. So, and those, those recipients will be announced during the scholarship virtual night um, production that we're doing. Okay, you'll get my dues very soon. Sorry. Yeah, no, but I just, I mean, that's pretty impressive. $1,000 scholarship. I mean, we're, we're very fortunate that we've, we've had the membership, uh, you know, year over year um, to be able to do it. And some of them are businesses, a lot of them are individuals. But uh, again, just another way we kind of turn things around and, and try and give right back to the community. Excellent. Brian, I am here, Kathy. Um, I know you said something Hi. about me. Hi. Miss um, you. <laughs> yes, I miss you too. Um, yeah, I did do the, um, a couple of things for the school and it was all outdoors. and. I felt safe enough because it was um, social distance enough and hoping right. maybe this year, I know our clap outs won't be the same. So we did a drive through clap out and mm -hmm. we filmed that and the kids really enjoyed seeing themselves. Whereas usually they just run through the school and it's not really filmed, but having that cop parade was really fun. So right. I think right. we um, started something new yeah. with that too. No. And, but, and, and you're a clear example that you know, people know people know that it gets covered. They assume it's us or the staff, but it's you know it's really it's volunteers that go out and do it. And you know the parents want to be at the schools, the teachers want to be at the schools. You know they they're there and they can help. Um, you know many many hands make light work. There's there's more than there's only four of us here, and there's more more schools here than us. So. Um, it yeah. really takes the membership and Kathy's, uh, Kathy's, you've, which, which, which schools, you babysit one school, what is it, Atkinson? Um, well, I work at the Kittredge. Kittredge, I'm sorry, Kittredge. Yeah. So, Kittredge so is I your school. Mostly. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, was, I forget what I was going to say. 
Oh yeah, so we also use like, so all the filming that we do of the concerts, I mean, we didn't have any concerts this year, but the music teachers use those films to show the students how they, um, they do. And so to teach the kids from the next year what the songs are. So I heard one of them going off today because they're talking about the spring concert and we're not having one this year, but he showed the students them when they were like in kindergarten. And so he still uses those films as a teaching tool Fantastic. also. So it's helpful for that. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. One of the I mean, it's this year, not last year, but one of the things that we did this year was um, the middle school specialists came in and they learned how to edit because it was a professional development day because that's what they have to do right now is they have to edit videos for their their students you know so we were a resource a free resource uh, for the community that they could give them professional training uh, to help them do their professional jobs that otherwise they couldn't have done so um, yeah. just another example with 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 uh, adapting for COVID all right but we thank you for all your help Kathy because you you're, you're everywhere we love it thank you I wish I could have done more this year but no. I had to keep safe too. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Everybody else? Excellent. I think we've had a couple people dwindle out, and I know Steve. I know you have to go soon too, so you don't don't leave your don't leave your guy in uh, in Haverhill too long, or wherever you got to pick him up oh. at the ice rink. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <laughs> um, so that that's all I have. If you guys are, if you need anything from me or any other questions. If not, I'll let Pete adjourn the meeting. We have a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Brian. Good job. Yeah, I second it. Thank you very much, Brian. Very good job. Thank you. you had to spend a whole year by yourself in that building, so. <laughs> <laughs> most of the year. Yeah, most most of, the year. of the year. It was like my roommates came back home from college when the staff came back in. So. Uh -huh. Oh. Yeah, right, 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 right. Okay. Excellent. Um, thanks right. again. So a motion to adjourn. A anybody motion? Do we have a motion? I second it. Sure. All right. All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank meeting, you, Brian. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. For the rest of you out in TV land, we're going to re-roll our um, year in review. And um, right. we'll, we'll see you throughout the year. But we'll mm -hmm. see you here at the annual meeting next year. All right. Be well. All right. Thank see you. you guys later. Thank you. As you know, the town hit its first presumptive positive COVID-19 case over the weekend. North Andover Public Schools closure will be at least one week longer than we had announced Friday. There are some very valuable resources here, as you can see. The Board of Health, effective at midnight on March 21st, has made the difficult recommendation to close all personal services businesses. We've been out of school a little over a week now due to the coronavirus. The first glove you take off by pinching it on the outside and just pulling it off. When you use these masks, you only put them on and take them off by the ear loops, just like this. Put them on, take them off. We actually have extra cruiser patrols out during this times to make sure people see a visible presence of the police in the community. We want everyone to know that they're safe. Firefighters that are currently working at Station 1 and are assigned to Station 1, they will continue to work at that station only. Resources for small businesses and employers, which contains several links to useful information, including information about the governor's recent order. The governor signed a law authorizing Board of Selectmen to vote to postpone the local elections. We're here in the food distribution line where we're giving out meals to families. We're in this together. We need to work as a team and just practice good social distancing. Today, we want to urge all small businesses and nonprofits with less than 500 employees to take advantage of the funding. It's clear that this virus is taking an immense toll on not only our personal lives, but also the livelihoods of our small business owners. And I'm excited that my staff will be sitting around this weekend and we will be judging uh, the winners there. So best of luck to all those who participate. We were devastated yesterday to report the town's first two deaths from COVID-19. As you may have heard, the um, Board of Selectmen voted to reschedule the annual election. We're giving out meals to students 
residents and seniors who need food. The economy has taken a massive hit at all levels. It's difficult, but a lot of the businesses, we, we do have to be patient, but at the same time, it's frustrating. One thing the town has done is it established a support small biz website. And you are here at the Senior Center, which is now North Andover's food bank. I want to reach out to ensure the residents of North Andover that our office continues to work for our veterans and dependents. We are in this together. Undoubtedly, the fall will look different than it did last March and when we're in school full time. We are here with district and school leaders who have been working for months on multiple plans for multiple scenarios. We work diligently to put together a quality remote program to provide an education to all students. You did a great job keeping your mask on the whole ride. We'll learn a lot and we'll see you this afternoon. They'll come out of their cars and every school will be slightly different based on the structure of their school. Today is Tuesday. We are here until six o'clock this evening. Wednesday and Thursday, we will be here from 8 to 4.30. The town of North Andover has been faced with significant challenges over the past several years. And now, the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. Thankfully, we weren't closed during all this. Um, we were still doing takeout. I've had some people walk in and be like, this is the one thing I've missed. First and foremost, I'm thrilled we're back in school while many communities are still remote. We've made some adjustments. Uh, primarily, we're going to stay with the same school for a week. Unfortunately, we've had five positive cases of COVID-19 at North Andover High School. See the three W's, you know, wear a mask, watch your distance, and wash your hands. We have worked hard to get our students back into the classroom. So you can see it's very busy here today, but the lines are moving quick. We decided to uh, help out our homebound elders by setting up a small food bank. Miz turned babyface in an attempt to, well, be friends with Shane McMahon and win the tag team titles. We have Valentine's Day to look forward to. Which school do you go to? I go to Franklin School and I'm in grade four. What do you want to be when you're all grown up? I don't know yet. I have to think about that one. We're welcoming folks here to the sixth annual Feed Your Neighbor Interfaith Meal Packing Program. Irina and I just want to extend the very best to you. When Irish eyes are smiling, what are your thoughts on housing inventory and availability affordable of affordable housing? We're all striving to, we know it's really, exp really expensive to buy a house. Quite frankly, risking their lives. Many of the folks that, you know, frequent Jeff's facility and the core room also come to Bread and Roses. I wanted to introduce you to a campaign that we're going to be involved in to support the Lazarus House. It's called Pop Your Trunk Campaign. This book by any yet unread, I leave for you when I am dead. Who are you most excited to see uh, make a championship run? I think that the two different sports uh, in terms of hockey and basketball uh, are completely different in terms of how they're going to restart. This year we have 500 flags on display, 150 more than we had last year. Current events are recognized immediately as historic in nature. I'm happy to announce that we are extending our Summer Eats program through August 30th. And then they used him to help them get busy on the gardens here. Our biggest challenge was the fact that we had to comply with all the regulations around the pandemic. We are just so excited to have Share the Love Consignment open up here. You live poetry. Would that be a way to say it? That's right. I, I, was, I fell in love with poetry at the age of four. I am pleased to announce that we are going to be reopening to the public on July 27th. And this is Samuel Johnson's shop that he built himself around 1800. Typically our welcome banner is going to be out there during the hours that we're open. But on certain days, we're going to be replacing that banner with flags. I'm standing in the Johnson Cottage workshop. Very exciting theater uh, towards the back that was converted from an old four-story stacks into a nice little 30 by 30 foot theater. We are open and ready to welcome you back. Our itty bitty program every year continues to grow and so many of the children are falling in love with baseball and moving on to the next level of playing in Little League in the city. 
and welcome to the Route 393 Democratic Town Committee Coalition conversation. Well, I think there's three things we need to do. One, we need to continue federal investment in biotech. Hi, I'm Mary McElhinney. I'm one of the committee members for the artisan market at the mills. Shopping is super easy on our virtual marketplace. At the North Andover Merchants Association, we support a stay local, shop locally mentality. We have about 24 volunteer businesses all across North Andover. You can see very clearly around the ceiling and in the uh, corners, we can see the building bones of the house. Pop-up shops, this is our third. We had one in August, it went well. We certainly hope that in 2021, we'll have a much fuller schedule and have the house open. We support local residents through our sports scholarships. We support the fall festival. A Pacific Green Turtle's flippers, then shell, spontaneously appear in waters laced with razor surgeon fish. Seniors chewing up the clock on this drive. Oh, oh, an accurate ball there to Sophie O, oh, and she gets in for the touchdown. This holiday week, we are hosting our Black Friday virtual market. Stop by in the comfort of your own home. Nate's 11 years old. Hello, Nate. I want a dog. And, wow, dogs are a big thing this year, Mrs. Wow. Claus. My favorite thing about Christmas is probably all the music and the lights, the, the family environment. Well, here we are at the North Andover Common, and we're capping off uh, what everyone would agree has certainly been quite an uncommon year. Five, four, three, two, one. Merry Christmas! School budget discussions are high on the agenda of every public school district at this time of year, and the North Andover Public Schools are no different. You did tell us at the Civics in Action talk that, you know, you're not only the town manager, you're a wife, you're a daughter, you're a mom. Um, just tell us how you're doing. How's the family going? How, how's everything going? We're doing good. So, you know, my husband and I both work in municipal government. Um, so that makes it interesting. He's with the city of Medford. Could you break down a schedule for me, if you don't mind, since you know, probably around March 13th when all of this kind of went down, at least for my students. Well, you know, happy to do it. And uh, just to remind folks, I live in Gloucester and I live on the family farm that my grandparents established when they migrated here from Greece. Captain Jack Morin, joined by his parents, Kim and Bill. Jack will be playing baseball at Roger Williams next year. Hi, I'm Amy Guggenberger. This is my mom, Anne-Marie, and my dad, Kurt. I will be attending Boston College in the fall to study Applied Psychology and Human Development. This year's $3,000 North Andover High School PAC Scholarship goes to Rafaela Machado. I am so excited to see her pursue a career in music therapy. Our Choral Award recipient is Katie Albrecht. Parents, friends and family, faculty, administration, and whoever else might be tuning in from their living room to watch this unusual graduation ceremony tonight. Isaac Glicklich. We are here for the fifth grade clap out for the kind kangaroos at Kittredge. She plans to join the orchestra and small music ensembles as well as the theater program on campus. Congratulations, Anna. 
That is uh, North Andover Town Moderator Mark DeSalvo. Mark, good morning. How are you? Good morning to everybody. Good morning to class. Uh, I hope you're all enjoying yourself bright eyed, looking forward to learning something. Some things that have been really different this year is one, we're practicing in these giant white tents outside of the school, and it's freezing most of the days. Laura has worked as a math teacher, reading specialist, and special education teacher, which requires some serious flexibility. That shouldn't be a surprise since she is also a cheerleading coach. Hi, I'm Laura Murphy. I went to Westfield State College and then American International College for my master's. Why don't we just get started, Max, with the, uh, with the first set of acts? I agree. What's this? What's this? There's something very wrong. What's this? There's people singing songs. What is a class action lawsuit? Well, in its simplest form, a class action lawsuit allows people who are in the same situation to pool their resources. This Friday, January 31st, is the final day to file claims in regards to the Columbia gas explosion. Professional Center for Child Development, can you give us a little history of how you started? We are an organization that works with over 1,600 children every year. My name is Melissa Rodriguez, and I'm still your relatively new town manager. I've been here about 13 weeks at this point. Hi, my name is Andrew Shapiro. I'm the Director of Community and Economic Development for the town of North Andover. So as we go through here, you'll see that we can look at demographics of the town. And one of the really great things about ClearGov is that they have data from across the state. And I want to take a moment to thank all the committee members who have become very close friends, Zoom friends, over the past month to make this happen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm honored today to be here to present this proclamation. Is someone going to direct us to our seat? How's this going to work? Absolutely. Okay. We're, 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 this is movie theater ushering. Is maybe maybe we can put up the diagram. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, oh there it is. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I invite you to come to town meeting. Bring your mask, please. So the finance committee hasn't made a formal recommendation on the Warren article re regarding the tip. However, you can again tune into our meeting on the 9th at 7 p.m. We will be further discussing it. A lot of our new benefit will come from these net new taxes. The town will receive a projected $18.2 million. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please raise your card. Should you be in favor? Thank you very much. And you may lower your, uh, lower your cards. And those against, please raise your card. I declare it a unanimous vote. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And I appreciate it a great, great deal. Ed? Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, it was a uh, privilege for me to serve on the Finance Committee. We now introduce our North Andover Scouts who will join us and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance via video. Scout salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Lawrence staying in there man to man. DeAndre King with the right. And the finish! Finally off this curl. Nice right hand up and under! Pass goes down. Melody down low. Outside. Big shot. Bang! Another three pointer. And Connors. Diego out to Panos. Panos and ho ho ho! Little bit of a bank shot there. Here comes Fagan. Fagan's got to go already. He takes a shot. And another goal! That's Perry with it on the right boards. Perry. Takes a shot, scores! And HPNA with it. Shot goes in. And score! And with it now, that's Keating. 
Keating moving up, gains the blue line, skates past the defense, left face off circle, SCORE! It's gonna be at least a near fall. And there we go, win by fall. Ethan Ford, the captain, scoring some big points. Cox trying to turn around Miranda, trying to get him on his back. And, oh, look at that move. Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of Scarlet Night Sports Scene. But being able to coach in the town I live in, I think um, North Andover is, is a really uh, awesome thing. We've got a small team, young team, I'm happy with everyone's you know, effort and attitude. We're looking at the, the championship part of our season coming up, starts this weekend with the state relays. We had a good dual meet season, you know, in terms of the girls. Aiden's been working hard at practice, I thought we had a really good game. Well, in a game where there were a lot of fouls called, we really hit most of our free throws. I raced, um, my time was 25.10. We had a girls team a few years ago that were state champions. Our highest last year was a 125, now we're getting 138. Today was one of my best meets in the high school. I think I did wrestle tough. There's obviously stuff I can work on. It's the site of the first NA Division III signing day, an event athletic director Laura Habaker was very enthusiastic to introduce. It gets all the way through, and it goes in! Winner with a goal! There's a race for it now. Who's going to get there first? The North Andover player. He's going to pop it over to the goalkeeper, and that's going to be a goal! Kendo gets up there. Kendall with the winner. Kendall Dowdy, senior captain. And to close out tonight's show for our uh, North Andover Annual Meeting, North Andover Cam North Annual Meeting, uh, North Andover Cam Annual Meeting for 2020, um, I would like to uh, mention our award for our membership. Uh, this year's only award goes to Veronica Reed from the YMCA. She was our volunteer in the 2020 COVID year with the most volunteer hours. Uh, all through COVID, we saw uh, Veronica once, once the doors opened back up. Um, she was here working on, her, on the videos for the YMCA, being able to communicate their message uh, throughout the COVID process. So thanks for coming in and congratulations. And with that, we say good night.